So we'll have a little fun. This is, this is again, confessions of a shoulder surgeon. And when I was a fellow, um, everyone, you know, whenever there's a hard case or someone didn't know, you'd get stuck with the films and you have to go chase Taboni down and find where Taboni was and ask him whatever you do. And really it was, it was about Taboni knows, right? And that's, that's, that's sort of how it went. So the iteration of this game or this, this thing starts from Taboni knows. And you guys remember Bo Jackson, right? Well, for a long time there was the, the Bo knows, right? But now we have Joe knows. And this is going to be about was Joe right and Joe's musings. So Joe has sort of learned a lot of things when he was a, a resident and a fellow. And if you look back on what was popular when, when he was in his training, you might cringe a little bit. We should get this on the family feud. Forget about DJs. Um, so the game is I will review a Joe-ism. Uh, you, all of you on these panels, uh, will state whether Joe is uh, actually mostly wrong or mostly right. For example, <laughs> Joe might say, I'm the best sh shoulder surgeon in Philly. Uh, Bill Levine, of course, would agree because he's so kind. And Jerry, I don't know. We'll let that. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll let the world surprise us. So let's go. The first one, actually, Jerry, you stole a little thunder. Joe says, um, if he can bill for an acromioplasty, he'll do it. If he's not going to get paid for an acromioplasty, he won't do it. So everyone, please open up your polls because I think the audience here is you're going to get polled on all of these. We want to know if. And it, mostly you do acromioplasty, mostly not. So, you know, no pontification that just come down, yes or no. Mostly yes, mostly no, never. Joe, start. It used to be mostly yes, not because of billing. Now it's mostly no because I don't think... Okay, there's a lot more words there. <laughs> <laughs> mostly yes. Mostly yes, 51%. <laughs> Larry. Mostly yes. Mostly no. Mostly no. Wow, so mostly yes is from the four senior surgeons and the other two say mostly no. So acromioplasty, I don't know, we'll see. Um, if, it, if it was billed for, do you think you would do it more frequently? Answer the truthfully. You two. No. No. All right, interesting. I work at Kaiser, I get paid the same, so there's no financial incentive to do it. So uh, is Joe right, right? Uh, it's 4-2, Joe, uh, Joe was, well, I said you don't do it, so it doesn't matter what you think now. Joe's, uh, Joe loses. I don't, loses. Do, it. I don't do it. I don't do it. You don't do it. Okay, so the next, next topic, you know, the acromioplasty is a warm-up. Biceps tenotomy. Plenty of evidence out there that biceps tenotomy, with the exception of cosmetic deformity, is equivalent in patients across the board. Um, Joe doesn't believe in biceps tenotomy. So, let's go to the panel. Um, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, on the last one, do we have mostly acromioplasties? Do you know the answer? Case dependent. Let's not give that as an answer option next time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's start. Let's start. Actually, Jerry, tenotomies. Where's the role for tenotomy in your world? Older patient, more sedentary, uh, poor quality tissue. But so, if you ask me what percentage of my bicep procedures are tenodesis versus tenotomy, I would say 85% tenodesis, 15% tenotomy. Butch, what percent of your rotator cuff surgeries get a tenotomy or a tenodesis? So percentage of cuff tears? Yep. 50%. 50%. And 9 out of 10 will be a tenodesis. Got it. And a, a question on the acromioplasty part. Every single person in this room shaves a little bit of, the, of the, the bone, just a little bit to get some view, a little bit here and there. So, you know, whether we call it, you know, whatever you want to call it, you're decompressing something. All right. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't do that, Butch. I don't touch Everybody the except Rafi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Sher? Um, I rarely do a tenotomy. I almost always do a tenodesis if I'm addressing the bicep. Almost always a tenodesis. And what percent of the, time of the time in the setting of a cuff? 85? 95%. 95. So real killer. Killer, killer, killer. I'm with Sarah. About 90, 95% of the time, always a tenodesis. I probably address the biceps 50% of the time, and it's always a tenodesis. Probably 20% of the time where I dress it, it's always a tenodesis. It's easier just to fix it than it is to explain to New York patients why I cut it and did not fix it. Columbia HSS totally aligned. <laughs> so probably 80% of the time uh, I, I treat it and it always tenodesis. So really, there, there's not a lot of, even though the data out there suggests that, that tenotomy is not superior, the data is overwhelming. There's level one data. It comes every year in another study. Um, you guys still prefer to do an operation now. So, so the, the data shows that there's two differences, the cosmesis and then some cramping. No, cramping doesn't pan out in like five, five randomized trials in a row. 
I mean, it doesn't pan out. And if you want to believe this shoulder and elbow journal or whatever it is that you participate in. It is, it is higher. It is higher in those studies. It's like 27%. And anyway, the, the cramping is one issue and it's debatable. Cosmesis is not an insignificant issue for a lot of patients. If you've spoken to them and you told them that they're going to have it, it still can be an issue for that patient because they don't believe it until they see it and they don't like it. Uh, all, very rarely. <laughs> yeah, very rarely as well. I, I, I'm just, I'll say one of the biggest sports medicine lawsuits we've had at our hospital was the unindicated or, or the unconsented uh, tenotomy. So a patient went in, saw it, you know, sniffed it. That's it's that was a big payday. It's you gotta be careful. Which well. is coming back to Anand's question, you know, is so a 51 year old guy comes in, he works out a lot, he looks like Larry, like Jack. John Topkins football. Um, <laughs> you tell him go fly a kite. I'm not going to fix this. Go find another surgeon. I, that's not. I, I, I'm just making them You're hold talking to about it. about a rupture, not. Yes, a rupture. Okay, yeah. by, a rupture okay. Isolated rupture with proximal biceps. You're going you're gonna to leave him alone. That's such an unsatisfying surgery. It's a, you do that once. You do it once. So and you, then you never do it again. So cosmetically, you're going to tinnitus everyone. You're going to make. You're going to sell 400,000 anchors a year. Uh, I fix it a lot. Me, so, yeah, I fix them. So I, I have an 81-year-old lady who does yoga every day, is super fit. I spent a half an hour telling her why she didn't need to fix this. I told her it's a waste of time. You're going to be fine in six weeks. She said, I, I will not let you not fix this. You have to fix this or I'm going somewhere else and someone else is going to fix it. So, so, I did just so you know. I did a subpectinidesis. And an 81-year-old. And an 81-year-old. You she, just sit, sit. She is incredibly happy. Sit, sit, sit. I'm telling Someone you. mute his mic. Okay, yeah, so we have Columbia, HSS, and Mount Sinai perspective. <laughs> oh. right. I mean, aren't you? I take that back. The acute, yeah, I mean, every now, yeah. I mean, the chronic is not worth going after. Oh, backtracking. Uh, so just so you know. So just. I'd, I'd want it fixed. I'd want it fixed. So work comp patients are very educated. A guy came in at a work comp injury, long headed biceps rupture. I told him it doesn't need to be fixed. He pulled up the AOS guideline for me and showed me that in laborers it should be fixed. So I fixed it. So I, I think there's a big di I think there's a big difference between. Uh... All right. So we we will we will move on from this. Clearly, you know, no one gets a tenotomy. Everyone gets repaired. No Paul, one gets repaired. Paul, we made that very very opaque. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I thank you for the expert panel here. Uh, all right. So Joe says. Joe says that the medialized glenosphere is dead. He will no longer do a Gramont style 155. He's going to lateralize everybody in all cases. Um, Javier, is he right or wrong? That's only, only no, no pontification, right or wrong? Wrong. 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 I mean, I just like that he's wrong all the time. Even if you guys are right. Yeah. So in the majority of your cases, you are down, so you guys have all just testified in front of your open peers that you're doing primarily medialized lenoids. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are we supposed to take away? You either do or you don't, right? It's not like, oh, well, in most of the cases, in 70% of the time, 100% of the cases, what do you mostly do? Do you mostly lateralize or do you mostly medialize? I'm mostly lateralized. So you agree with Joe? Look, I don't think it's dead. It's dead. Rafi? <laughs> I was I with Melissa. Mostly, mostly medial or lateral? Lateral. Mostly? Yeah. Melissa's, Melissa's feisty. Mostly medial. Yes. Oh, Vani, get, get the mic. Yell at him. Yeah, all right. Oh. There you go. We're talking about the glenoid. It's hey, global lateralization that we're talking about. He's responding to the question, Dr. Savison. Yeah. By the way, Larry has now been called out. He does something and he doesn't. Oh, I would never fix that biceps. Well, I mean, I would actually, if they came in and see me, I would fix it. As long as it wasn't Medicare, I would do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> mostly lateral, mostly medial, Bill. M more lateral. Mostly medial. Mostly medial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> Help. All lateral for me. All lateral for you. Totally agree with Jerry. All lateral. Mostly lateral. No. Mostly. So I think I think lateral is going to win here, uh, with the exception of you know global. Yes, Ronnie. 
<laughs> okay, what angle numeral implant do you use? I just want to know the number, not that that's a mostly. Joe, just walk it down the line. 135. 135? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah, 135. 35, just sort of articulate it, because uh, Dr. Zoomstein let us know that 35s are the worst. Next. <laughs> 145. 45. 35. Okay, so you didn't listen to Zoomstein. Zoomstein and Tajin gave the best lectures ever. Next. 145. 45, someone who listened. Uh, it's kind of a 35, 45. Story. No, no, which one? <laughs> I don't know, it's like 50, 50. You have to know. <laughs> Pick one. This is, how, this is how you. 35. Yes. 35. 35. 45. 45. 45. 35. Matthias, are you here? Are you, are you, have you flown back? He, oh. he was in shorts downstairs. I saw him. <laughs> All right. So um, we talked about bay place lateralization. Joe uh, has another Joeism. Joe says the latissimus transfer, now that he can lateralize, the latissimus transfer is stupid. So the question for you, each of you panelists, are you stupid, or is Joe stupid? Is this, for the, is this Paul, is this with a reverse, or? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, well, this is with a reverse for someone who's got an external rotation lag, um, and does it, does it help it? So uh, you or Joe, pick it. Who's the stupid? The stupid. Is it, is it a relative thing? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, you've got to answer. I'm stupider than Joe. Oh, come on. So you, so you do uh, lat transfers? Yeah. OK. Yes, on lat transfers. They, they don't get the neutral. Joe, for sure. Is stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's no way that a lateral center of rotation eliminates a huge external rotation lag. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joe is, that's a Joe is stupid. Joe's stupid. Bill, I didn't, I, I mean, we're having fun, but I didn't yeah. get, I didn't understand. So, do you believe, is Larry right that you need to do the latissimus for a severe lag? Well, I don't think lateralization is going get rid of the lag. Okay, fine. I have not done a lat transfer. So Joe so. is stupid. Yeah, it will just default. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Me either. You guys have an opinion on this? Yes, of course you do, Butch. Four latissimus transfers and nearly 4,000 reverses. Only four. So if someone has a severe lag, they can't feed themselves, they sort of flop to stomach. I think what you have to determine is um, the lag sign that's associated with absolutely nothing on the back of the humerus. If the back of the humerus has nothing on it, I do a transfer, and that's rare. All right, good. Uh, we talked about implant size. We talked about if Joe's right. You guys, do, do, do all the fellows and residents know who this other guy on the left is? You know, we got Einstein for should be. Do you guys know who Alfred Newman is? No. Oh, it's so sad. <laughs> that's so sad. I'm so, I'm so old and creepy. -er. <laughs> all right, so uh, Joe actually did this, this, this case. Um, and he, and he sent it up, sent it up to us, and after Laurent biopsied it for piacnes and we resolved that infection, Joe switched over and says, now I do IM nails of the clavicle, right? Because he thinks it's a better, faster uh, operation, and there, there's some data, and, and people have this. So, Javier, any IM nailing in the clavicle? No. Well, I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would, I mean, now you... Pedi pediatric cases, I'll do. In a pediatric case, you'll use a flexible nail? Yes. From medial or lateral? Uh, I go through the fracture site, then back through. Oh, wow. Any nailing for you? No. Larry? No. Melissa? No. Rob? No. Nails? No. No. That was easy. First of all, that's a lie. I don't nail anyone. You have never nailed anyone, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's just go on to this last one. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I have to tell you, <laughs> he's going to kill you, dude. <laughs> I can't unsee that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like I photoshopped it, I swear. That's, it's on my computer. We're planning this meeting, and Joe's like, oh, I'm here right now. And, and then he goes to FaceTime, and I see him. And I mean, what's, his arm is like dysmorphic. I don't really get it. <laughs> My therapist and I have been working. This is a true story. <laughs> no embellishment. My therapist is trying to help me unsee things. <laughs> All right. So uh, 
<laughs> there, there, there have been a lot of mic drops for this meeting. Um, I, I think that one of the more significant ones was when Dr. Boileau says, I do not do shoulder arthroplasty. And we'll, we're going to change the 42 to a 50-year-old. But we're going to say with that, I do not do shoulder arthroplasty in a 50-year-old male. It doesn't exist to me. I'll do a, he'll do a pyrocarbon head, and he won't worry at all about the glenoid. So, Butch, you're going to finish on this thought, because I, I think I know where you stand. But 50-year-old male, you've exhausted your, your non-arthroplasty options. There's, there's nothing else, right? Will you do a total or a hemi or a, or a ream run variety? Would you do a total or something different? Start with you, Javier. Um. <laughs> so it depends on the configuration. No, 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 no. You, this is it. You a fifty-year-old mostly total. So you're going to resur really what I'm asking is, are you going to resurface the, the the glenoid with polyethylene? Yes. Yeah. Total shoulder all day, every day till Sunday. The only question is is an inlay. Depending upon that fifty-year-old, is an inlay better than an onlay polyglenoid. So I don't know the answer to that. So, so now everyone out in the audience is like, okay, so now I got a 50-year-old coming in. What did they say at this conference? Did they learn anything or did Levine confuse me? 50-year-old, are you telling this audience to inlay or onlay? I'm, I'm going to do a total shoulder and I'm going to determine if I'm using an inlay, which I have not done that many of, full disclosure, or an onlay based on the patient, their activity level. If they tell me they're going back to the gym in 13 minutes after the surgery, I'm going to do an inlay on that particular patient. So Bill is telling you to do inlays on the appropriate patient. He hasn't done a lot of them, but you should. Hey, Bill, it's every day and twice on Sunday, not, not on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Larry. Just once on Sunday. Not, not total on Sunday. shoulder replacement, whatever works best in your hands. Got it. Total shoulder. Total. Jerry. I'm going to say total. I would have said hemi a while back, but if you look at the re revision data, if you look at the number of revisions in a person's predicted lifetime at the age of 50, the, there are a number, higher number of revisions in hemis than there are in totals. Yeah, I have no problem doing a total shoulder in a younger patient if they need it. You got, you got a minute and a half to pontificate on this one. I, I have a whole talk on this. Oh, today? Yeah, today. Oh. So we'll I'll drop the mic. Yeah, that's it. Hold on for what Krishnan says. All right, well, that's it. Um, thank you very much. I think I'm now, uh, my panel is over. <laughs>